Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth. I go by Honest Liz on the internet. If you're new here, welcome. Today, I'm going to take you through a heartwarming journey of how I got into this curly hair business. Picture this, I'm 27 years old and I'm postpartum and suddenly my hair just doesn't, it just, it's just not manageable. And that was the most pivotal point. Growing up, I couldn't afford any fancy tools or trips to the salon to straighten my hair. I had friends who did that, but me, I just, I wasn't allowed to do that. So I had to work with what I had. Little did I know that that limitation would help me find the most easy and effective way to take care of my curls. To embrace my natural hair, I relied on coconut oil, Pantene shampoo, and the L'Oreal Liss Esteem. Do you remember that? I don't know if you do, but we're talking, this is 2000, 2005, 2000s, early 2000s. <laughs> We are talking about something that um, used to be in the market 24 years ago. Surprisingly, this minimalistic approach gave me a lot of compliments on a daily basis. It's important to know that as a teenager, my hormonal aspect, landscape, yeah, landscape, my hormonal landscape was very different than how it was in my 20s or in my 30s and now I'm 37. So in my younger days, whatever I did, worked for my hair and I find that true with a lot of other uh, clients that I work with right now also. The younger the client, the easier it is to take care of their hair with minimal things. While my hair looked pretty with minimal things when I was younger, the same routine did not work once I had my children. My postpartum hair became really sensitive, very brittle and I just couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Picture this, back then in India, we had no salons for curly hair. We had nobody who supported curly hair. And every salon that we did go to would shame us into doing these crazy treatments and hair spas or like uh, chemical treatments to straighten your hair. They would be like, oh, your hair is this and your hair is that. I don't want to repeat those words. They're really, really shameful words. Ironically, my lack of access to those salons <laughs> turned out to be a blessing because I never had to do any of those treatments. I mean, I couldn't afford it. So when I was 27, I was postpartum and I went to my mother's house. She was taking care of me for a couple of months and I was really, really down. I had postpartum depression. And my hair on top of that just wasn't cooperating. So she took me to a L'Oreal salon just to cheer me up. And the salon looked really nice, so fancy. So I went there, sat on the chair, trusted them to take care of my curls. But I came out of that salon feeling even more terrible. My hair was worse than how it was, I, how it was when I went in. And that was a turning point. That experience completely shattered my trust for these hairstylists in India. I just could not trust them with my curly hair anymore. That day, I realized the importance of understanding my hair and knowing what to do with my hair was so much more important than depending on someone else who pretended to know that... Okay, I'm writing. Salon stylists in India can be incredibly persuasive. It's like you sit in their chair and whatever they do, it's like we have no say. And even if we, I mean, we, we, I don't know about you, but for me, I can't even tell them to stop. I'm, uh, I used to be like that. But that After day, me, I realized the importance of advocating for my curls to really know what's important for my hair and, and the techniques I need to do to take care of my hair because I couldn't trust anyone. From that point on, I've been cutting my own hair, I've been doing hair spas at home and I've been taking care of my hair myself. Quite determined to take care of my curls on my own terms. My hyper focus into curly hair started with YouTube and uh, curly hair blogs at the time. International curly hair products became my staple. I started experimenting and as long as it was fun, as much as it was fun, it was also really costly for me to 
to get all these international products to India from Amazon or ordering directly from the brand. I had to wait like so long for the customs clearance and all those things. It became really expensive. As someone who applied coconut oil daily, I was really surprised that my postpartum hair became sensitive to coconut oil. This revelation emphasized that everybody's hair is so unique. It became so thrilling to identify these patterns and trends that could be common in curly hair types. Joining a Facebook group became a solace at that point. I was postpartum, I was working from home, I had, I had uh, quit my corporate job and I was taking care of my babies full time at home. I was devoid of social connections. So finding a Facebook group for curly hair was my solace. I was there in all my free time. I was the first one to answer queries. I would also post my updates on the Facebook group. And I, and I really cherished every interaction that I had. But soon I was thrown out of that Facebook group for being too active. <laughs> Oh, that happens and uh, it was very sad it took me like two weeks to get over that trauma because suddenly I had nobody to talk to and I was all alone again once I took time to heal from that event I decided I would post on Instagram I already had an Instagram I had posted all my baby updates and my personal updates and chicken curry recipes there but as soon as I started sharing my curly hair posts, those posts started getting a lot of attention and people were curious to see how I was taking care of my curls and what product reviews I had. And I was openly telling people that, you know, don't do this or do this. I was pretty aggressive if you look at my old uh, posts. Um, I was a very different person at that time. Anyway, from this Instagram page I started uh, a group on WhatsApp and this group we would uh, talk about products uh, and techniques and what worked for them and what it didn't uh, we would exchange products and and that WhatsApp group uh, at that time we could only have a limited number of people so then we had to move the WhatsApp group to a telegram group and there I had gathered over 600 women on that little telegram chat and it was just so exciting to be on that telegram group with all those women chatting about curly hair. We finally found our little community with like-minded people. In the middle of all that, a pivotal phase unfolded. I found myself becoming the first reseller to introduce coveted international hair products to the Indian market, facing challenges along the way. I was just the one person doing all of this work, like packing, boxes, customer care. Oh, this was just too much work for me to do alone. This, mar this period marked an innovative yet challenging chapter in my journey, pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the Indian hair care landscape. And I'm proud to say that some of the co collaborations that happened on that, on that chat, there were many uh, groups that stemmed from that one WhatsApp and Telegram group and some of these uh, people who met on the group have now have their own brands, curly hair brands in India and I'm so proud that something like some something so little as that could make such a big impact on our curly hair movement in India. Then came a time where uh, brand connections started happening while I was on Instagram and while I was on these WhatsApp groups and Telegram groups. That came, that brought a whole new challenge in itself. I found that the small businesses run by women, I used to support them a lot, but some of them took a lot, took advantage of me and had created this relationship with me where I was so faithful and loyal to these brands that I would create so much of content out of the love I had for the products. It wasn't anything to do with money. I never got any payment for any of those posts and I later realized that that was something so toxic uh, because you when you work you need to be paid and and I wasn't doing that correctly so that experience really helped me to look into the small business that I was running and 
I was then I started talking to international curly hair bro bloggers and how they uh, talk to brands and how they actually got into these written agreements and things like that. The sting of being taken advantage of really fueled my high vigilance in this area of the business. So because of these negative encounters with these brands, I now choose to work with only a few brands and promote products that I actually use and promote. I understand that reputation is invaluable. Nothing can replace somebody's reputation. So the, in my book as a policy I don't promote anything that does not work for me and to find the products that truly work for me I had to continue doing those experiments so apart from getting products from the brand I, I would also continue to purchase products on my own whatever I find locally whatever I had to order um, internationally I would wait for Black Friday sales and get products like that also and continue my experimentation so I'm up to date to what's happening in the market but as a policy I would only post about what works for me and my clients. So that experiment then led me to a burnout because I was experimenting, filming, posting at least three times a day every day for three years non-stop I never took a break and if you've been following me from those times you know that you would open your phone in the morning and you'd see my story or you'd see my post I as much as uh, as much as I loved doing that it was also causing me a lot of um, mental and physical anguish that my family started being concerned especially my husband and my children but they needed my time also and so that was a pivotal point in my life where I decided to offer one-on-one -on -one consultations which were paid so picture this I was sleeping just four or five hours a day I was always on my phone either emailing or creating content or posting and after posting I was I reply to every single comment I reply to DMs that was my life and and that was burning me out so the journey to find authentic products and give genuine re reviews although it was exhausting um, it was a lot of fun to do but then I just I that was a point where I had to recheck and see how my life was outside of social media and make some changes there so in the middle of all that exhaustion i continued to believe that every setback was a set stepping stone so this is when i released my one-on-one -on -one paid consultation so that people who are genuinely interested to see changes in their hair to transform their curls they could book my one-on-one -on -one and and that would be a fair trade <laughs> for my time also. and this passion that I have for curly hair did not overshadow the joy of being at home and looking after my children and my family so this was another significant point in my curly hair journey so the natural progression from being a social media influencer and being a one-on-one -on -one consultation giver I then decided to become a trained curly hair stylist I met Lauren Messi uh, who wrote the Curly Girl Method. I met her and she trained me how to cut hair um, in her method. And after that, I met many other stylists and took uh, courses. And now I have my own method to cut and style curly hair based on what I have learned from all these different people and based on my experience. So I had my salon when I was 34 years old. It was the first salon in India that was dedicated to curly hair using international and Indian curly hair products that were safe to use. And at this point at 37, I'm so proud to say that all this knowledge that I have of the last seven years, I have now put it systematically into my new curly hair course. In a world where personal training and access to safe curly hair products can be scarce, I want to be your mentor. This isn't just about curls, it's about embracing who you really are and enhancing your natural beauty and fostering a community of like-minded people. So let's redefine the standards of beauty one curl at a time thank you for being a part of this incredible story